Hi, I'm Alex. I'm an engineer here at Kasten, and I'm going to show you around the new K10 multi-cluster feature. Now, if you've used K10 before, this will look familiar to you. This is our, our dashboard for a um, K10 running in a cluster. And in this cluster, we've discovered eight applications. Um, we don't have any policies yet protecting those applications, so it says zero. And of course, we don't have any data resulting from uh, data protection. And no, no jobs have run. So this is a pretty fresh uh, new cluster. Um, but what is new on this screen is uh, this breadcrumb item here, a navigation that says clusters, and uh, the name of this particular cluster is primary. We just, it could be anything, but we happen, just for simplicity, I, um, we have this named primary and secondary, which I'll show you in a second. So if I were to go to the clusters page, this is new. This is a new single pane of glass, multi-cluster dashboard that shows a summary of all the information across your clusters. Uh, we only have two clusters set up here. Um, and uh, what you'll notice is that one of these clusters is labeled as primary. It's all ha also happens to be called primary. Um, but when you, when you configure a multi-cluster environment, you'll uh, designate one of the clusters as primary. And so this is, the, this is where the UI for the multi-cluster dashboard is. So I'm actually just pointing this UI at my primary cluster, but I can still browse through and look at all of the clusters through this UI. Um, so like I said before, these are pretty fresh clusters. We don't have any, um, any uh, policies yet. We have uh, no compliance yet because we haven't set up policies. So we have eight unmanaged here and three unmanaged applications on that one and 11 total, two clusters. Um, we'll get, I'll show you uh, the global resources in a little bit, but we don't have any data um, being stored yet. Um, so let's go ahead and just dive into one of these clusters and take a look and see what kind of applications we have to protect here. We have a variety of different apps, um, but I see that MySQL is on here, so um, we'll try to protect that. Now let's go take a look at the other cluster. I can jump straight there using this navigation feature. And here I see we have MySQL also, and um, waiting for the uh, details to be discovered. Okay, we have two volumes, and uh, looks like there are eight gigs each volume here. So let's go ahead and create a policy to be distributed to all of our um, to all of our clusters in one uh, one action. So these are our this is a summary of our global resources. And what that means is we can define uh, location profiles which define your you know cloud settings at Amazon or Google or wherever. And you can define your policies centrally and then we have the, we have this notion of a distribution which I'll show you. But we define policies and profiles and then we distribute them to our clusters. So let's go ahead and, um, and start here. We'll create a location profile and we'll just call it my uh, location. Oops, I spell it right. My location profile and we'll, we'll set it up with Amazon. Uh, I'll use my password manager here to grab uh, the credentials. And paste this in here, a key. And I'll grab the secret. Paste that in, uh, I'll select a region, and I've got a test bucket that I've called uh, Kasten IO Alex V, and we'll save the profile. Now, if you're familiar with this with uh, Kasten's um, UI, you'll notice that this is different. We're basically trying to make it really clear that this is a global profile, that it hasn't actually been added to any clusters yet. Um, it's being held here in the, uh, in the global UI and then we'll distribute this um, in a moment. So let's go ahead and create a policy that uses this, this uh, location profile. Um, and a lot of this will look familiar if, you, if you've used K10 before. So we're gonna call this, uh, we're gonna call this protect my SQL. And we want to snapshot daily and we'll go ahead and uh, export to, it's already pre-configured or pre-selected my location profile there. We'll go ahead and uh, export those to cloud storage for for backup to make them backups, and we're going to say uh, MySQL. Now, um, what what uh, the K10 UI is doing here is it's actually querying all of the applications across all the clusters, and then showing a, a deduplicated version, uh, you know, list of them all. So, um, so I, I'm selecting MySQL, and we don't need to do any of this additional advanced stuff here. So I'll go ahead and create the policy. Again, uh, we have this extra. Um, bar at the top 
that just says that this is uh, has not been added to a distribution yet. This policy won't take effect until it's actually been moved to a cluster. And we can see that uh, we're using this location profile. Now, uh, we have this convenient button here that allows you to create, a, uh, have a one button click to go straight to distributions and pre-fill the form. But instead of doing that, I'll just go ahead and do it manually so you can see the process. Uh, so now we're going to create a, a distribution to distribute these resources out to the clusters, and we're going to say uh, we're going to say protect all the MySQLs. Um, and now we got to decide which clusters we want to send uh, our resources to. So we're going to go ahead and specifically name them the primary and secondary cluster, but um, you could also use labels. Um, you may, if you have dozens or hundreds of clusters, you may label your clusters uh, based on what type of cluster they are. Maybe they're production, or they're staging, or test, or dev. Uh, maybe they are based on organizations. It depends on your situation, but maybe it's you know, marketing or development and that sort of thing. Um, so you can do it based on whatever labels you set up on the clusters themselves. Um, and that way, if new clusters are added with that label, it'll automatically pick up. So I'm going to add. I'm going to add. Um, my policy that I just created, protect my SQL, and it's going to let me know, hey, uh, this policy depends on this location profile. You probably want to add that too, so we'll go ahead and add that as well. So now we've defined what we want to distribute and where we want to send it, send these resources, and we're going to add the distribution and let it get to work. So what it's going to do next is it will start um, syn synchronizing uh, these resources out to these clusters, and it looks like it's already done. Uh, as is typical in our K10 UI, you can actually look at the YAML of the, uh, of the resource. Uh, distribution, similar to our policies and profiles, is a, um, a Kubernetes uh, custom resource. And so you can, uh, you can see the actual resource there in YAML. Okay, so, um, so now when we go back here, you, um, you know, we can see that uh, these, these items have been distributed out, and we can go look at uh, the, we can go look at the clusters and see what's going on here. So we can see that this policy has arrived on this cluster and it's labeled as global and we can't edit or delete it because it's a global policy. And if we come back here, um, the reason it's labeled as non-compliant is because it hasn't run yet. Um, so we have a policy protecting it. It hasn't run yet. No jobs have been scheduled. So it's being shown as non-compliant. And we'll switch over to the, the other cluster and see what's going on there. Okay, we also have a policy here. It's the same policy. It's MySQL. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this. And we'll also take a look at the location profiles here. And we can see the location profile showed up as well, just like we expected. And, uh, and I'll go back over to the primary. Uh, now, the, I, normally I wouldn't have to manually um, start these. They would just pick up on schedule, but since we're in a demo here, I'm going to go ahead and just start them off. Uh, let me go back to the primary. That's where I meant to go. And we will uh, run this as well. And then we'll start to see the, these uh, applications come into compliance. And you can see that uh, this one is now showing as compliant because the job has been scheduled and it's running um, and it's doing the backup and it'll, it'll export when it's finished. <clears throat> Once those jobs have completed, you'll start to see the summary changing here. Um, we're showing these now, um, I'm showing uh, these applications as compliant. We have one policy on each of these clusters and uh, this will update in a moment here. Prometheus just hasn't updated in the background yet. So that's how it works. Um, so it's, we try to make it easier for our customers that have lots of clusters. You can imagine how tedious it would be to manually do this across dozens or hundreds of clusters. And uh, this should make it a lot easier. Hope you enjoy using it.